I believe that this is the time of great healing. It's a time um, later when we have communion. Anyone who still has pain in their bodies or trusting the Lord for a breakthrough, I want you to come and sit in front. I want people to come and love their, lavish their love upon you. And as we take the communion, it is the promise of God that He has. We are healed. We are favored. Guys, the, the, the biggest problem is, is when my wife walks around with an identity that she's not loved, when she believes that I'm not delighted in her. It's from a point of view where she knows that I love her and that I am so fully into her that gives her a security so that she can stand up and say, you know what? Man, that's why we get into marriage. It's so that people will feel and experience a consistency saying the following, I choose you every time irrelevant of anything that you're going to do during this time in my life. I choose you. I love you. The thing is, what I had to, do, what I had to discern is, is how God has married me. Amen? Who believes that God has married you? God's married to us. We are His bride. He's fully, he's fully in love with us. So this morning, I'm going to ask you to get out your offering, um, get your offering right, and I'm going to pray over it. Um, I'm going to speak of the light of the eye, the, the light that penetrates through the eye. Because if we struggle to discern this and we struggle to see, if there's no light in your eye, then the body says your whole body has become dark. But as we would, w I was listening this morning to a, a thing of Bill Johnson, and he made this declaration. He, says, he said, the problem with revival was that we think it is this, this place where God gives us a hit, and we go from uh, experience that we had with God, and then we get the super experience that will sustain us for the next two, three, four years. You guys are welcome just to continue with that. He said, we should study and figure out what God's heart looks like. We should study and figure out what God's heart looked like, and not study to see how revival looks like. So when you study the heart of God, you will find revival. If you catch God's heart, the essence of His heart, what's the essence of His heart? Widows, orphans, the broken, those in, in need of a Savior. He said, I did not come for the sick. When we, when we have that in our midst, we are busy with revival. Amen? So he made the statement, he said, we study revival to figure out what God's heart looks like. Instead of studying God's heart to figure out how revival looks like. I think that's a good place just to give a hand. What I do believe about revival is that I believe that God is going to smother us. This next move of God is going to be because of the love of God. It's the love of God that leads people to repentance. I'm an evangelist of heart. I said, Lord, I'm, I'm yearning for the lost. I've got this grave within me for the lost. I heard the Lord say to me, love people. Just love people. The next move of God will be so simplistic. It's the, the, the Bible says love is above all things. And if you have all these things, you can speak in tongues, you can let the sick lie on the ground. All that will happen from love. But none of it should happen if there's not love. A greater love has no one seen that one took his deity, his kingship, and he overthrew himself out of heaven. And he walked amongst men. And he loved us so much. And he would not refuse sinners. The church refuses sinners. I've got this desire because I believe that the Lord has given us an anointing of fathership. I really believe in, in the prophetic. I believe that the, the, the move of God is the love of the Father that's being restored in our hearts. It's by seeing the Father. And I believe in fathership. I'm being fathered and mentored by different men in my life. And it's a belief system that's brought many times because the generation we have entered in doesn't want to be fathered. Because we had such bad experiences with earthly fathers that we don't want to be fathered. We felt their beating and their rot more kinder than their words. Because their words has hurt us. You know what the Lord is busy restoring? He's restoring the identity of how we look in, 
how we're looking at the Father. I really believe with all that's in me that, that if, I, if, if I am to be qualified, I, I believe that God will say to me, well done, faithful servant, faithful son. If I could bring my sons into a mature place where they have outgrown me, I've become their lesser. But because of the love between us, it's not an inferior thing. Amen? If, if you want to be the epic in the family, it will always stop at you. My, might we become the flaw for their success, successes? May this next generation in the church foresee us. May, may they overgo to a next level experiencing the glory of God. And may we never stop telling them about go for it, chase after it. May we be in, encouragers, cheerleaders, cheering them on, saying, go for it, go for it. You know how the Sp Holy Spirit is cheering me on in this season? I feel so loved. I tell my wife, I, there's some mornings when I get into the shower. Now the Lord speaks to me in the shower. Who, who knows? <laughs> Man, the Lord speaks to me in the showers. I get these revelations in these heart. But there's some mornings where I find myself in the shower just crying, saying, Lord, I don't think I'm saved. I don't think I'm worthy. I'm really the Shulamite girl that still sees all the, the wrongs and all the differences and all the hurts in my heart. And then the Lord just starts reminding me of His presence and His everlasting love and how He's committed to complete this dance. He's, he didn't just come and pitch and say, listen, here, let's get engaged. He's not the guy that walks out. He's the one who stays. He sits up with my moaning, my groaning, my crying, my hurt, and he smothers me through them all. I'll come and yes, you'll give it to you. Amen. I love kinders. I stap na nero uit, gaan druk ek hulle aan die voorportaal. En hou my kaal sê vir my, hy is om thuis hier die koels te skoen. Ek sê met vir jou ek so paar kry. Hy sê ek soek het. Ek sê vir my, paar gaan jou slaan. Ou met pink strikkies op sy skoene. Yes, so thuis hier die koels kry. Ek, Groot mense, we've lost it. We've so lost it. Net vir oomlik, haal jou tanne uit smal vir jou lang show. That's what we need to do in this season. Matthew 6, 19. Let's get into the word. This was the script, script I was going to use for the finances, but um, as we are speaking of the light of the eye this morning, I'm, I'm still in this, ek sê vir oogend, sê Erik vir my, sê, like nie so untimed nie. <laughs> untimed ones. <laughs> Halleluja, ek lyk so'n bykie time vir oog en prijs die Heere, wacht oor dat ek die baie uittrek, broer. Ek gaan vanavond, ek gaan koor daad, so gaan ons kyk, hier time is die. Don't keep hoarding for yourself earthly treasures that can be stolen by thieves, material wealth, if it eventually rusts, decays, and loses its value. The one thing with God is, when God looks at us, we never lose value. Amen? You've never lost value. He's considered you every time to be the, the epic of what he wants. Elke keer draai sy hart terug en hy sê, ek soek jou. We've not, the problem is, because we are used to things, everything depreciates in our lives. We've hold on to things. Jou kar, hierdie jaar, is minder waard as wat hierdie vorige jaar was. Jou huis, wel, partij ons al sê hy, apprecieer, wel, Ek het ek het ek goed gekoop en ek het nou dag het ek het verkoop vir minder. En wat ek vir jou kan sê in this season, what I really believe what the Lord is saying, is He wants us to understand that we do not lose value. And if we are in Christ, we don't decay and we don't grow old. And we don't, ons, ons word nie moeg of mat nie, maar ons reis op op arends vlerke. There's something in the men of God and in the women of God who understands the heart of the Father that do not grow tired and meek. But we stand up and we say, Lord, we want to chase after you. Listen to verse 20. Instead, stockpile heavenly treasures for yourself. What is heavenly treasures? What does it even look like? The Bible says, what Sile Ven is, is wise and is rijk. Dat is iets in God's hart ten opzichte van zijn economie. That he's looking at the loss and say, how many of them can we win? Because that, in that I will count you as rich. In that I will count you as successful. 
Hoeveel keer raak jou leven mensen aan? Wanneer laat het jy compassie gevat, nie geld gegeen nie, compassie gevat, en bij iemand gaan sit en vertel, weet jy hoe die verkies is jou? En dan vastgehou, dat sy stink op jou kom, maar dat jylle kon verruil, want dis wat Jezus met my gedoen het. Hy het my gedruk, en al my vol was op hom. En man, ek het goed gevoel, dat ek al weggeloop. Hoe vergeet ons ek ervarings in die teenwoordigheid van God, en ons dink, dat hy het sy mind verander oor ons, as gevolg van dinge wat ek en jy mis. Vir een oomlik, Klim Petrus uit die boot uit, hy het revival met die God wat hom op die water uitroep, so onder, onder ongemakkelijke omstandighede, tree hy uit, one of the, the few in the word, but today he's mentioned, with the top names in the word, he's related directly to Christ, one of the, the, the one who had zeal, en ek wil vir jou sê, hy was nie so timed ou nie, as hy na Petrus gaan kyk, het man, hy was a villa ou, I say, instead stockpile heavenly treasures for yourself that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, lose their value. Now I want to tell you the one thing that will never lose value is the love of God upon your life. If you can stockpile on that on earth, it's better than any Bitcoin, any rand, any, any, um, enige belegging wat jou in jou leven kon maak. This is the true value, is to stockpile up and to know what the Father says about you. Listen here, verse 21, for your heart will always pursue what you value, your treasure. Your heart will always pursue that which you value as your treasure. This is Jesus what he brought. So where your heart is there, your treasure would be. Jou hart jaag achter dit wat jy die hoogste value. Bible sê, Dit het ek teen die kerk in die laaste dag. Hy sê jou eerste liefde. Die value, die... Nou, en sê ek nie probleem, maar wat ek vir jou kan sê is, God's not mocked. Ek gaan nou vir julle lees, it's not mocked. Only what a man says that he will reap. Only what you chase after is what you will have. For your heart will always pursue what you value as your treasure. The eye of your spirit allow revelation light to enter into your being. The eye of your spirit, nie jou visies oog, the eye of your spirit, allows revelation uh, light to enter into your being. If your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. So what we see is almost like the eye is the heart. The way we look at it determines how much light we can get in or how much light will we receive. Amen? Wie van jy is excited oor die licht? Die licht van God. Die Bijbel sê, dit was in die oude dag was het donker, maar nou dit vir ons licht geword. Amen? My woord sal soos een licht op jou voete wees. Ek geloof dat a rise shine for your light has come. Ons gaan nou nou daarna kyk. It has come. It's not something that needs to, to, to still happen. So luister hier so, the eye of your spirit allow, allow revelation light to enter into your being. If your heart is unclouded, the light floods in. But if your eye are focused on money, with other words, if you are chasing money as your success, in the one degree, or you are looking at your financial problems, it's the same thing. Because your eye is not focused on the one who is, was, and will be. It's not one or the other. We think that it's only people that is chasing and have this love for money. It's also those who look to money and say, Lord, there's no hope. I don't know how I'm going to make it. Money determines if I'm okay or I'm not okay. Who said on your kill? The eye, but if your eyes are focused on money, the light cannot penetrate and darkness takes its place. The Bible says in the last days, darkness will cover the earth because people will have a love for money. Sond uit vat, gaan kyk in 2 Timotheus. Hy sê vir hulle in die laaste dag, gaan donkerte die aarde deur, deur druk. Maar weet julle wat, vir my en jou, ek, ek is nie vir een oomlik, die Heer het my die vermoe gegeen, my oog af te hal van die donkerte en die probleme. Ek is in een seizoen en ek kan nog nie self, ek had het all figure out nie. 
wat ik vir kan sê is, is die Heer is bezig om my hart te werk, en hy brei om, soos vir hy oud die broeder gedruk het, en gebrei het, en geknie het, is hy bezig om my hart te werk en te knie, oor sy liefde, en hy is so aanhoudend, en hy druk so hard die altijd op dit. How profound will be that darkness within you, if the light of truth cannot enter? Wie is die truth? It's Jesus. If the light of truth as Jesus sy licht nie in jou kan inkom nie, hoe donker sal dit nie wees nie? It's in the Passion Translation, you're welcome to download it. I felt, fell in love with that translation. Galatians 6, 7 says, Make no mistake about it, God will never be mocked. So God will not be made a mockery of. And this is usually just used in the context of finances, and it's not what I intended this morning. For what you plant will always be the very thing that you harvest. Okay, so let's read this out of a different context this morning. Because we sit and we think, Lord, what is the seed? En as ek vir jou wit, as ek vir jou wit, meer vanag, dag ek jy met een rooi koliekie op, dan ga allemaal vir my sê, hy is veil uit een rooi koliekie op hom. Maar ons mis die groter wit boord. So die gevolg is dit is, hy sê, for what you plant will always be the very thing you harvest. When I read the scripture in the eyes of beloved identity, I started praising the Lord. You know what? The reason for that is, because now I understand that I can plant love and I'm going to receive love. That I can go and lavish my love on others and God's just going to come and fill me all up again. That it overflows. There will be no measure upon me. I can now understand that I can go and give and it will be given to me. It's not only, man, you've missed it and now you're going to reap all this. Krijg vir jou broer. Want die Bijbel sê, God het blind geraak vir ons. Maar wat van Paulus hier praat is die hart. En luister mooi, the harvest you reap reveals the seed that was planted. And it's not, he's not busy putting a condemnation on you. He's asking you, what are you seeing in your life? Because that's most probably the type of seed that you've been placing all over and over and over again in your life. En partij van ons het, het die wonderlijke vruchte boorde, maar ons kyk na die, die twee of drie of vier goeikies onder die boom, wat ons oor aftrek van hom af. En luister mooi, if you plant that corrupt seed of self, life into the natural realm, you can expect to experience a harvest of corruption. But if you plant the good seed of the spirit life, you will reap the beautiful fruits that grow from the everlasting life of the spirit. Who's just excited about this scripture? Can I tell you why? Because it's got a new meaning for me. The meaning that, I, that it has for me in this day is, man, I'm so willing, Lord, help me and give me the ability to go and invest my best. Help me to go and give my best. I'm not preaching on finances. Does it include it? If you need money, what should you do? So, just apply the word. If you need love, what do you need to do? Go and love someone. If you need forgiveness, what do you need to do? Lord, who can I go and forgive? And if there's no one in your heart that's offended you, who can I remind of your forgiveness for them? Because we think we only need to go and forgive those who are stressed past against us. Weet jy nou makkelijk is om iemand lief? Dis vir my nie moeilik of Rowan lief te enie. Want ek ken hom. En ek het een liefde in my hart vir hom. Dis betek hier vir my moeilik om Julius lief te heen. Weet jy hoe vraag ek vir die Heer? Ek sê, Heer, ek gee my tyd. Want ek, ek ken Gods hart. Weet jy wat, sometimes God will offend the head to see what's in the heart. He will send me into a shop and guess who I will walk into. And I will stand there at this stage as a Pharisee instead of a representative of seed that's being sown into people's lives. Because we've made a mockery. Know what's the mockery of God's word? The seed, the wasted seed is when it's not taken. There's nothing wrong with the sower. It's the ground if it can contain it and receive it or not. Kom ons gaan aan. So the scripture I shared a few weeks ago when we started on this journey is Isaiah 60 says, Arise, shine, for your light has come. 
Um, it says in the Amplified, Arise, shine out of your morbidness and depression which circumstances have kept you. Arise to the new you. And then I said to the people, if you start arising, the only way you can get out of your morbidness is in the light of Christ. Is to understand the revelation light that God has placed upon your heart. And then it brings you into an act of obedience. It's not by your works. I want to tell you, no works. The Bible says, the sien van die maak reik, moeitevolle arbeid voeg niks by sy werk nie. Your ability to, to contribute to God's salvation, there's nothing you can do for it. But what it does do, whenever you have received this grace, there's something that happens within your heart that you want to extend this grace. And grace is not only the ability that you were forgiven and what you've received, it's also the supernatural ability that enables you to do that which you couldn't do in the past. That gee jou eeuwiskielik hierdie vermoe om hierdie kind van God te wees. Maar het gebeur net onder identiteit. When you can see yourself as He sees you. Dankie vir die preek wat jy vir my aangestuur het. Nou, André Bronkos maak een verwijzing en ek praat op die kamp hierdie naweek daar oor. Clifford stierf my preek aan waar hy by City Point preek en hy sê, hy praat van hoe sy skoon ouwers sy boot, sy engine gebreek het en hoe God om hulle, hulle laat seil het en hoe hulle die storm na storm gebruik het om by hulle destinatie uit te kom. We look at storms and we think it's a curse. If you really have the right heart and you see the wind that drives it, many are the plans of a man's heart, but God is busy directing our ways. To Paulus op a skip op eindag en hy drijf op a faikie, was het nie die oordeel van God nie. Because man, he had come to the point where he has seen the Father's love towards him and he has known that he is loved and that he is so unworthy out of himself that even his Jewish back culture, nature from the past does not qualify or, or validate him. What validates him is the fact that he has come to know him in his fullness, his son Jesus, and the fullness of his love that he's paid for every sin and that nothing can separate him in Romans 8. Nothing. That is what validates Paul. And it's as soon as we get this conviction that Isaiah 61 becomes the revelation in our hearts where we start preaching for those who are lost because you can only give what you have received first. When you were morbid and you were in the hole, you weren't able to preach to anyone. And this will come here sing in handling a 16 who sit Paulus and Silas and they make the Heer's name great so that the tronk dieren up gaan for another. It was not about them because if it was about them and the ability for them to escape, they would have ran when the jail doors opened. They stood their ground and they were testifying even if it had to cost their lives. Because really, what can you take from me? What will you take from me? My life's not my own. Something is busy happening inside the church and God is reminding the people how beloved you are. How much He loves you. Not how much you love Him. If you go to God with the much love you have shown Him, you'll always feel inferior. Paulus gaan sê, en hy sê, my beste werke, as ek dan al kyk, dit is so onwaardig, hy sê, my jyre, jy werk, jy werk van die kruis, jyre, dit, dit validate my. Dit bring jy dan in Isaiah 62, en dat ek na die dag gedeel het, en ek sê, Hepseba, for the Lord takes delight in her, and I'll call her land Beulah, she's married. Jy sien, wanneer ek en jy in hierdie ding begin ingaan, jy laat jou hart toe dat God vir jou wees wie en wat jy is, is daar niks wat jou kan vat van hom af nie. Dan gaan vir jou vinnig lees het Matthijs, Mat, 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 <laughs> hey, ja, Matthies 17. Gesponsor dit Living Water. Dankie julle, die rand. <laughs> Six days Later, Jesus took Peter and two of the brothers, Jacob and John, and hiked up the high mountain to be alone. So the intensity was, I had three of my friends, for Kobus and for Ruan and for Rossi, and we went to the mountain. 
Ons is daar maar alleen tijd te gaan spandeer. And then Jesus' appearance was dramatically altered. A radiant light, Isaiah 60, a radiant light as bright as the sun poured from his face, and his clothing became luminescent. Dazzling like the lightning, he was transfigured before their very eyes. Owens, hierdie, in my opinion, is die eerste huge herleving wat uitgebrek het. En raai wat, toe hy daar is, die volgende omik, toe is daar twee pastoore wat ook daar opdaag, een Mooses en een Jelia. Hulle, kyk, as daar revival uitbreek, dan die ouwens wil kom join. Wie, wie het al gecheck? Amen? You want to come in the spirit of Elijah? I tell, I tell you, I want to come in the spirit of Jesus. Amen? You want to be as Moses? I want to tell you, I want to be like Jesus. David's desire was, Lord, just have this one. For me, it's better to stay in your presence than anywhere else. Luister mooi. Then suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared and they spoke with Jesus and Peter blurted out, Lord, it's so wonderful that we are here together. Well, yes, Lord, it's so lekker that ons is so ons, ons is nou, ons is nou net waar ons moet wees. Ons sê, sê, het nou die greitheid. En die volgende omlik die join die sevende persoon wat sy naam dad is. Daddy. En luister mooi. If you want, I'll construct three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But while Peter was still speaking, a radiant cloud composed of light spread over them. So we see Jesus becomes this light. He's doing the very thing he saw the Father do. Whenever your heart is turned towards the Father, you'll get your heart doing what the Father wants. As jy sikkel in jou vlees, al wat jy moet doen, is jy moet het recht kry om te sing hoe hy na jou kyk. You need to behold how the Father looks at you because that's the one thing that will change you forever. If you look at your works, you will disqualify you to come back to the Father. But if you look at the Father, He will validate you time and time again. Every single time, the Father will validate you and say, I love you, I love you, I have a plan for you, let me show you, as my ways are different as yours, so is the earth removed from the heavens, and so my way is anders as jou, and my gedagtes is anders as, alles van God is anders as wat ons is. And the way that we get that figured out, out is to look in his eyes. But while Peter was still speaking, a radiant cloud composed of light appeared over them, in, 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 enveloping them all. Verseel hulle allemaal in die ding. Sê die papa van ons. And God's voice suddenly spoke from the cloud saying, This is my dearly, my dearly loved son. The constant focus of my delight. Who's die? Ek sikkel om my oor van hom af te gaan het nou vele wees in die Bijbel. Oud Testament. Hy sê, hierdie is die een wat my hart warm maak. Hy sê, ek, hy, is my, hy is my constante focus. Dis die een op wie ek my oor sit. Want hy kyk op sy seen en sy seen kyk op hom. Ek wil gauw vir julle vinnige geheim vertel, dat ek en jy is seated in heavenly places. The place where we are seated is in the body of Christ. Van ochend hier waar jy is, is hier net a cloud of witnesses nie. Ek wil vir jy sê, ek en jy is deel van sy lichaam. Het jy dit geweet? His eyes is focused on us. Die oor van die Heere deersoek die aarde vir diegene wat sy harte onverdeeld is. Lord, I'm in you and you are in me. Die probleem is, is wanneer ek sien hoe ek nie deel is van hom en ek voel ontwaardig en ek doen wat Adam gedoen het, dan gaan ek na my mens natief toe. Maar nadat Jesus gekom het, sê hy, is ons nie meer in Adam nie, ons is nou in Jesus en ons kom voor en toe. En ons staan so en sê, Heere, dankie. I bring a sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice of the praise is to declare in honesty my reliance on the one who is, was, and will be. My afhankelijkheid, Heere, van die goedheid en die genade, dis jy alleen, Heere, wat my hart kan verander. David maak een streng, hy sê, Heere, teen jy en jy alleen het ek gesondig. Ek het teen oor jy kort geval. Wees vir my hoe jy my restore. Kom wees vir my, because your mercy triumph over your judgment. Why will I keep on preaching? Ek geloof rechtig, hierdie ding is die ding wat ons gaan vrymaak. If we can see the heart of the Father for us. As jy jouself in die prentje kan inlees en verstaan hoe much hy jou love gaan het gebeur. To say, listen to him. The three disciples were dazed 
and terrified by this phenomenon. Hulle was nie gepla toe dit Jesus was en hy verander nie. Hulle het nie daarmee gesikkel nie. Die kerk het nie gesikkel toe Mooses en die leeuw opdag nie. Imagine van ochend is hier een manifestatie van mense wat uit ons presence uitgegaan het en hulle is terug hier so. Die woord sê toe die vader het dekle reis en maak oor sy seen. Luister mooi wat gebeur met hulle. The three disciples were dazed and terrified by this phenomenon. And then they fell face down to the ground. But Jesus walked over and touched them saying, Get up and stop being afraid. When they finally opened their eyes and looked around, they saw no one else there but Jesus. Who will see God and live? Who can you in sy oor kyk en nie verander nie? Weet jy wat is die ervaring wat ek hier het? Ek sien hoe die disciple sikkel. Hulle is ok en ons kan tente bou vir Mooses, ons kan tente bou vir die profete, ons kan ruimte skep vir amal en vir alles, vir hierdie herleving en daar herleving, maar die vaderse affirmation oor ons is net te veel. Sy hart oor ons is net te veel. Sy nie opgee, sy liefde, sy cheering on is net too much to contain. This is my beloved. My dear is, I cannot take my eyes off him. Jy sien, as ek en jy dit kan vastmaak, dat ons is in Jesus, en ons is delightful vir hom. Weet jy wat, then we can walk with open eyes, praising the Father all day long. Weet jy wanneer prijs ek en jy die Heere goed? When we've done it right. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. And then it's very easy to praise God, Het is makkelijk om die Heere te prijs, wanneer ons alles recht gedoen het. Dit is wanneer jy vir die volgende drie weke by die huis gaan bly, en weet jy wat sê vir my? Dat jy is nog op melk. Dit is wanneer jy geval het, en jy voel so ontwaardig, en vir die volgende ruk moet ek op die melk bly, en nou moet ek verdien om nabij aan sy borst te kom. Ek kruip net weg. A plek van sacrifice is when jy, as jy op stuik is of op vleis is, is when you bring your flesh into God's presence and say, Lord, I'll bring this as your sacrifice of praise. Weet jy hoe mooi is jou filthy reks vir God as jy dit vir hom gee? Weet jy hoe laf hy jou? Weet jy hoe smadder? Ek, ek onthou in die tye, my moeilikse tyd was dat ek probeer op hou rook het. Wie van jy het al ooit probeer op hou rook? Nou, dit is een nachtmerrie. As jy probeer op hou rook, gaan jy achterkom, dit is nie een makkelijke een om te los nie, want hy is wetig. Die ander goed is, kan jy vir jyself sê, dit is nie wet, so nou moet jy die wet ook probeer baag. Die rook was vir my die groot ene, want hy was nog so, en hy is moe die heel aanvaardbaar en alles, en nie dat ek dink, mense gaan helpen wat rook, en ek dink, het jy reik, as jy van die helft kom. Ek is het niks te doen met die rook nie. What I really believe is that, that God wants to do a work within our hearts. And don't leave your smoking, Unless you've got a conviction of the Father. Toe ek tot bekering kom, toe sit ek in die kerk, en hulle sê vir my, haal jou piercings uit. Ek het oog piercings gehad, drie, en ek denk so voor dat jy my geken het. Ek ken, jy ken my seken al 20 jaar. So die gevolg is, toe ek tot bekering kom, sê vir my, haal jou oogring uit, haal jou tongring uit. Haal, jy kan nie tattoo sê nie, snij jou haare. Wie weet of ek praat, hou ons? Dit is heilig maak. En nie noodwendig dat het verkeerd of alleen was nie. Dit is net het was meer feit as waarheid. Weet jy wat is die waarheid? God my lief het net soos wat ek is. Toe kom ek by Nebel, weet jy wat sê Nebel vir my? Hy sê die Heer het jou lief net soos wat jy is. Kom net soos wat jy is. En hy gaan jou nie los soos wat jy is nie. Hy gaan jou nie los soos wat jy is nie. Ek het al hoe meer gesien dat ek sekere goed is neerlee, nie uit my eie werke uit nie, omdat ek so geliefd is, en ek het my beeld begin sien, hy het my gevorm met sy oor, het was nie een werk van een pastoor, een geestelike pa, een dominee, enige iemand nie, it was a work of the father's hands, upon my heart, waar ek moes vastmaak, jyre, ek wil nie vrouwens misbruik nie, want ek voel vir eens gewelledheid in myself, ek het gevoel uit my lief, En weet jy wat, toe kom haal die Heere, nie ek nie, die Heere die perversiteit uit my hart uit. Ek het nie een behoefte vir ander manse vrou nie. 
nie behoefte om ander man sy vrou te vat nie. Yes, hoe heilig is jy nie? Nee, niks daar mee te doen nie. It is the love of the Father upon my heart that turned my heart back to Him. It's His ability, not my ability. It was not through my power nor through my might. I want to show you something in Exodus 33 verse 7. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp, and he called it the tent of meeting. Moses called it the tent of meeting. So when we come to our tent of meeting on a Sunday, this is our tabernacle, amen. He called it the tent of meeting. The problem as it ek het is, why was the tent outside of the camp? Why wasn't it just placed in the center part of the camp where God always want to be? So he had this place because everyone was afraid because when God comes in, he comes in with judgment. Perfect love cast out all fear. You know what's the thing in my heart? When I realized how much he loved me, it started casting out my fear of being displeasing and being displaced. As I shared a few weeks ago out of the book of Luke, the problem with the book of Luke is it shows you your displacement instead of showing you your position. And it's not a problem. It's what you take out of it. Most of the people read it as the prodigal son and not the loving father. Because we feel that the displacement is on our side. We reveal God from, we, we look at God from our perspective instead of looking from his perspective. I weet if I can feel a sin mark and everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting. And I know how many people are going to go out to the tent. But there's a difference when it becomes your habitation. And everyone who sought the Lord went out to the tent of meeting, which was outside of the camp. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people would rise up, and each one would stand at his tent door and watch Moses until he had gone into the tent. Wie van jullie dit al gedoen? Dus kijk naar die pastoor, ons gaan deelneem en sy glorie, maar ons gaan nie nabij kom nie. Wie van julle is gereed vir die beweging van die Heere? Ek wil vir jy sê die, as ons dit, as ons die stelling maak, moet ons gereed wees, dat baie mense gaan gaan, because not everyone wants God's presence. En dan moet ons gereed maak, dat dinge baie anders gaan wees, as wat ons het die verlede gedoen het. En dat ons gaan anders wees. Praat nie van hoe jy het nie. Mag die volgende beweging soveel liefde in ons harte sit, dat wanneer die vir die kinders in die school nog wiskunde gee, dat hulle tot bekering kom. Mag het so anders wees, dat, dat wanneer jy uit gaan piek en pijt, dat jy die, die prostitiete nie kan uitloos nie. Die draakies nie kan voorbij gaan nie. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent. And the Lord would speak with Moses. And when all the people saw the pillar in the cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise up and worship each at his tent door. Now it klink so glorious. The enigste problem is, is, how come the people are not in his presence? Nie? Why didn't they participate? Because that's the Father's heart. So lief het God die wereld gehad, dat is die enige boere sien gegeer, dat elke een wat in hom sal geloo, elke liewe een, nie verloor hoef te gaan, nie nooit weer hoef te onderbreek aan enige presence nie maar dat ons sy volheid kan beerwe. Dis die hart van die vader, is volheid, is, is nie matigheid nie, is, he did not give the, speci- the, the spirit with measure, he gave it without measure. Daar is een constante vloei van iets, wat, wat as ek het moet volmaak, wat daar overflow is in ons kultuur, laat ons nie toe om dit te doen nie. Want vir ons is het moeilik om te aanvaar, dat God soveel in ons wil uitpoor, in sy liefde en in sy presence, dat hy een vrou of een swaard mens, of iemand wat anders as ek kan gebruik. Ek weet, ek gaan nou paar boere hier weer vind, dis hoe ek die shack so gelaf het. Who's seen the movie The Shack? I've got church people that's angry at me because I make this statement. I think it's so perfect because it puts God in the position of a black woman. God the Father. And it doesn't fit in our frame of reference. And I found that so many things, that's why I'm starting to read the, tra- the Passion Translation because it doesn't fit my reference. And it's busy throwing me all over, everywhere. 
Luister naar vers 10. And when all the people saw the pillar of the cloud standing, okay, they went to their tent doors. Verse 11. This is the, this the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaking to his friend. And when Moses turned again to the camp, his assistant Joshua, the, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. I quickly want to spend five seconds on this. So what we see is that Moses had a face-to-face -face encounter with Jesus as if he was a friend. The revelation is never about a friend. It's about a father and a son. The problem is if we don't get beloved identity, it's so difficult for us to come close to the father face to face. So what we had here was Moses, and many of us go, we go to church, and we have the, we will worship at our ten doors while the pastor has this experience and presence in the Lord's presence, for he's so much higher and greater. But it's not what God mentions it. And then it says, when Moses turned again to the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. So he allowed Moses to bring him to the glory of God. But once he hit the glory, Moses, you can go. He wasn't Moses' hunt longer. He wasn't his, 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 his follower, his disciple. He followed the presence of God. You know what? If Moses knew God as a friend, then Joshua knew him as a father. Yeshua. One went out and he went back to the camp, but he could never enter the promise. He had this time and time in, time out, time in, time out. Joshua had this continual habitation of Jesus and he took the whole nation into the promised land. I want to tell you, if you want to take your family into God's promises, it's time to go and form a habitual place where you go into his presence and you would remain there. That's why I say it's difficult for me in this, in this season to, to say, Lord, we are going to do this in 10 minutes or half an hour or, or in an hour and 15 minutes because this is the time we have set out. I ask for the Lord, I say for Carly, I think we have to go on Friday or Saturday to work, because it's not for us to work tomorrow. Imagine if we come here and we have to eat our bread, we have to eat our bread, and you sit there. And hier zit iemand in hulle heil. En daar zit iemand in hulle woord bevry. En hier sta, staan iemand, en hulle is bezig om God te worship. En ons is vier ure verder. En het is so ongemakkelijk voor allemaal van ons. But we, we've got this experience of His presence. What will we not give to get into that place? Ek wil vir jou sê, people change identity because of that experience. Petru, ek The, one of the reasons why I so f I love you was not because you were so broken. It's because of the revelation of Jesus that, that went so beyond anything in your life that you could not contain it by yourself. You rebranded yourself. You re-identified. Like, as I talk from Prat van Ochtend, for you for Peter Kenny, Peter came out of homosexual background. She was broken in that area. And so we've got um, lots of people that we've walked the road with. Oh, so few of my geestly sins have been a bad step, but in a sexual sonde geval het. And they were so broken. You know what in the church with people is so? We say, no, stay away. And I don't talk about the liberistic thing that says, you know what, the Lord has forgiven, go be in your homosexuality together. That's not what the word of the Lord says. Maar wat ons doen is, ons maak het awkward vir enig iemand wat anders is ons zondag om na by God te kom. So what, what will happen is that I believe that God is busy doing a work in our heart. And, and Peter, you know what? How you've blessed me. Because you've taught me some of the love of the Father as I looked in your eyes. And our, our times and the things that we spoke, when you spoke and you phoned me about that story, you know how my heart was confronted because I had to sit and say, Dad, reveal it in my heart. You healed a certain part of my heart that was still leprous, in a sense. And I sit with so many young men and women. You know what's the problem? 
that God's not only, I want to tell you the homosexuals are going to flood in here because the message of beloved identity, it's, the, it's understanding what the Father has done is going to heal the hearts of the broken. You have the gays, the lesbians, the homosexuals coming in, in crowds. Very few and seldom amens. Because we don't want to see people healed if it's uncomfortable towards us. I want to qualify it. So when the heterosexual guy comes in, or the guy that's living in adultery, does it make his sin, his sin any different than a homosexual sin? So when God heals, and I need to leave my identity and my preferences, doesn't He expect the same of each and every one of us? But let Him complete the good work that He has started within them, and allow Him Allow them to experience the love and the conviction. You know, when, when, I, when I came into the Lord, I was, I was um, dating a witch. <laughs> Sounds very bad. A real witch. <laughs> Not a... Um, my Macy was a, was a hex. Glad nie, soos wat jylle denk, soos nie misrik, soos eindelijk a baie nice girl. Sy was maar net, a, sy was met a rechte, echte heks. <laughs> en die gevolg is, dit is, dat when I started dating this, this girl, man, I, I really, I really felt a connection between the two of us. And when I got saved, they said to me, listen here, you can't, we, we can't walk this road anymore. And one of the things that I experienced is that I was crying at night. I felt when I got saved, I was, I was weeping for the lost. I said, Lord, please. And I never saw her turn. Lord, please, just do a work in her. Lord, please, just do a work within her. We have forsaken our first love. We have struggled. When I, we were on this weekend, I shared with the guys, I get not what it is now. I do not know what But as we went on this weekend, um, I was reading through John 5, 14, 15, 16, 17, um, 18, up until 21. I'm, I'm, I'm working through John just in, in looking in the Passion Translation as he sets these events out. And then I, I witness how, how Jesus was from washing the fourth of their feet. If you can't see the Father washing your fourth of your feet, if you can't see the Father coming close to that which is less desirable in your life, and you see him taking the light, you'll always have a problem to come close to the Lord. And what I really believe is, I believe we're going into this time of intimacy. Let's just read 2 Corinthians 3.16. But the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, the veil is lifted and they see. I just want to stay, stand on that point for a while. The, the moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, the veil is lifted and they see. And guys, I want to encourage you, please bring your Bibles to church. It's not a law thing. Bring your hard copy Bible, kiss it, fall in love with it. Um, the Lord really wants to do something. The moment one turns to the Lord with an open heart, you're not looking to your circumstances. The veil is lifted and they see. I want to tell you there's something about the veil of God that the law has been this veil keeping us from seeing God's true nature, His glory. I want to tell you God's going to just take the law away from you so that you won't look at it. Now the Lord, I'm referring to the Holy Spirit and wherever the Lord is, there is freedom. Who's looking for this new type of freedom? I could have understood this. The moment you turn to the Lord and we take away the mask. You know, I struggle to see people's facial expressions who wears a mask. You can't see where they are really at. You, so a veil is nothing else than a mask. Not that I'm going to go into that area. We can all draw close to Him with the veil removed from our faces. And with no veil, we become like mirrors. 
the moment you take away that which condemns you, perfect love, cast out fear, the moment when you stop fearing of how God's judgment is going to come and say, Lord, I know you've loved me, you have overcome the enemy, you are helping me, Lord, together we are, are walking through this process, Lord, you are, you are cheering me on as I am getting better each and every day. The moment we, rev we remove this thing, this lawish thing that's over our eyes, that's kept us from the Father's heart, we will become His mirror. I asked the Lord, Lord, how do I become like you? He said, remove the veil. I said, Lord, how do, how do I love people? He said, you need to remove the veil. All the laws and all the things that's keeping us. Because you know what gift come here? I can't hold gift out of my natural ability as a black son i can't hold and love him amen we struggle with this type of thing in our nature sit gift because in the flesh and in our own nature we have learned to not be like god I want to tell you the time is coming where some of the biggest fights will not be white and black it's going to be the vaccinated unvaccinated we're going to have struggles. That I think you said that. Um, there's, we, we, we're going to struggle through a, a few things. The only place where we're going to meet each other, it's not Trump or not Trump. It's not Ramaphosa or, or Zuma. It's when we come into the perfect liberty of love, where God's heart is so sold out on us and the church is still preaching the good news of the gospel. I need to repent. There was a time when I was looking to all these politics and all these things and I'm trying to figure out these things. And the Lord said to me, turn your heart back to the ABCs. Get your heart sold out on me once again. I'm calling you deeper. Deeper, not wider. Deeper. Matthias, go deeper in with me. And that's where I'm at today. We can allow, um, and with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of our Lord Jesus. We are being transfigured into His very image. I just want to speak about this. The, when you look at Jesus and He becomes your mirror, then you become transfigured. Remember the experience I just spoke about which Peter had on this mountain with John and, and James? They became, the, the, what the word is saying is, if you look at Jesus like this, and you spend time in His presence, and you have this face-to-face -face thing with Him, this intimate thing with Him, you'll become His mirror. It means the following. You will be glorified. I believe that there's glorification going to happen on earth. I believe in church we're going to have encounters where people are physically going to have an experience with the, with, 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 with the heavenly bodies. That's what the Bible is talking about here. I mean, you didn't sit in the in house of me. Okay? Want ons kan nie dink nie, maar imagine, Jesus Jesus, en hy word, hy word verheerlik, en hy sê vir ons, as ons na hom kyk, word ons net soos hy. And we will brightly reflect the glory of our Lord Jesus. We are being transfigured into His very image as we move from a brighter level of glory to another. I want to tell you what we've experienced in the church now was very bright. It was light. It was great. But what we're going to experience this season is we're going, to res we, we're going to experience the restoring of the broken coming in. Ek glo die Heer het een wonenwerk gedoen, en moet nie een fout maak nie, ek is nie teen wonenwerk, ek is, ek is proe vir die goed, as daar iemand is, wat het jeun is het ek. Toe die Heer laas jaar my dochter kan die doodheid opwek, when he raised our daughter from, from, from death, you saw it, Wilhelm saw it, we were so confronted and we saw the hand of God as God came and He healed our baby daughter which drowned. I tell you what I yearn for more is for those who are going to hell to come in. To see those guys come in. I ask the Lord, Lord, why ark? Because it's, it's so hard on the church, especially in this season. Financially, we can't, we can't bear this load. The Lord says, start yearning. You carry this load have this heart for this and the thing that we ask the lord for is not to be a rehab is to become a place where displaced people come in in the revelation of who they can be in jesus christ and turn from their wicked ways and serve the father of all their hearts it's only being displaced it's by coming to the father where you get repositioned and i want to tell you i've met some of the most significant and greatest guys who many of us would walk past Today I'm a rich man 
because of the people that have come to know was Moras. Moras, staan op, hou. Hart op voor en toe. <laughs> Geef my haar uit. Who remember Mornay? And he came in here, he looked like an ass fool. <laughs> and he didn't have any feathers on him. Hart op, hou. Wat moet jy gebeur? <laughs> Let's just give him a hand. <laughs> Oh, Moros, just look at this guy. Isn't he beautiful? He's almost ready to get married. Nee, jy sit hier voor by my na. <laughs> what, I, what I'm excited about is when people who stood at the robot with a plastic bag three years ago, twee jaar terug, two years ago, Asking for money so they can go and get his next fix. And has an encounter with Jesus and he gives everything up. It's glory to the Lord. The Father loves us. He loves us. What I'm seeing when I, when I looked at you this morning, I saw the transfiguration. I saw something. And it doesn't mean we are perfect. It doesn't mean you will not make mistakes. But you stay in the place where, the, where your Father has called you to be. You go into that thing. I'm just going to make reference to it. Um, the difference between position and presence is that David was yearning for the presence of God and Saul was yearning for position. I'm going to read it to you. Saul, Saul wasn't really a bad guy. Saul was um, at the place in his life where um, he, he did not do what God said and then he, he, he didn't kill the donkeys, he didn't kill the sheep, he didn't kill Agag, he didn't kill the nation. David, on the other hand, was a murderer and an adulterer. And in some context, they even call him a rapist. They said when he called Bathsheba to his chambers, it was Sagittarius rape because he was the king, she could not refuse him. Amen. So here we see the, the difference and the one wants to be just a servant. Remember in, in Luke 15, the boy was reciting in the pig's, uh, um, what was it, the farkok, the pigsty. He was reciting, he's saying, I'm going back to my father, I'm going to tell him. He, he got this whole thing re recited in his head. I'm going to say, Dad, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy of your presence. I can't co come close to you. And then as he came there to the father, I can see how he walks and he recites it in his head. I'm not worthy. Just make me one of your servants. I just want to be that. I will be, become a wage receiver. And then he came to the father and the father saw him from afar and the father ran to him and he embraced him and he kissed him and he would not stop kissing him. He said, quickly, bring my robe, my best robe, the very best robe in my wardrobe. Bring it, come and place it over him. Put a ring on his finger, restore his feet, give him sandals, bring the best shoes and put it on his feet. That's the difference between one who's a servant and one who's, who, who's, who's yearning for presence and position. If you go and you settle for position, you will always end up being a wager. And listen here, in, so, in 1 Psalms 15, 30, he said, I have sinned, yet honor me now before the elders of the people and before Israel and, and return with me that I may bow before the Lord your God. This is Saul speaking. And what Saul is saying is, Lord, I know that I've missed what you have said, but he's more cared of what the people will think of him then what he really knows, God is thinking about him. When David sinned, he made the following statement in Psalm 51. He said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, change me. Change the spirit from which I, I, I go. Change the very thing where I rely back on. Lord, what I am, I can't be that anymore. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. He was craving the presence of God. He said, Lord, I don't care. Let the people reject me. Let them refuse me. Let them chase me away as the king. But Lord, do not take your spirit away from me. That's the desire of a man's heart who is craving not for the position but for the presence of the Lord. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. You know what's the problem? We forgot where we got from. Ek het vergeet in wat sy gemoos was ek, en hoe sleg ek was. En dan raak jy een fariseer, wat so oor die mense kyk, en dink jy, ja, die sonde van jou broer, 
Now what the Lord is busy doing in our hearts is giving us a passion because we know where we come from. We glorify in Him. Weet jy wat sê Paulus waarin roem ons? Hy sê roem in jou, swak jyre. Hy sê roem daarin. Nie kom loop en vertel uit glorie, uit hoe greid en hoe stout jy was en hoe droog jy gemaakt het nie. Hy verafskier die ou wat in 2 Korintiers 5 arrogant is oor die sonde met sy stiefmal. Wat gemeenskap het met sy stiefmal. The whole thing here is not, it's, it's recognizing that God has called you to a deeper presence with Him. And if you can take that this morning, God's going to restore something in your family and around you. I'm praying for my family. I'm praying. Now, when I talk about it, it's not a liberalistic thing. I've never said, if the homosexual can come in, they can say, Lord, I know that I'm perfectly love in this house. I know that there are people who will accept me. They will accept me as I am. But they're going to walk a road with me so that I will be changed into His image. That's perfect love. Amen? Romans 8, 16, For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as He whispers into our innermost being. Who's ever heard it like this? For the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as He whispers into our innermost being. Jy is so lief, hy. Ek soek jou. He whispers into my innermost being. Listen here. You are God's beloved child. Not just God's child. You are His beloved. You are as I see my son. You are in Christ. As since we are His true children, we qualify to share all all these treasures. Wie is excited to write scripture? Net vir een kan iemand staan en dans? <laughs> kan iemand net hulle, 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 hulle biscuit skit? Enig iemand? Mora, skit jou biscuit ou. Laat ons sien. <laughs> ok, so iemand moet ernstig begin. Woohoo! There must be an excitement again about the promises of God because he's renewing it. And listen here, I want to tell you, His true children, we qualify to share in all His treasures, for indeed we are heirs of God Himself. What means? We are fellow heirs. We also have self the felt, as what Jesus said. Now that you've got the same playing field, will you have His eyes? Now that you've got the same opportunity, will you have His desire? You know that the word says His desire is for them, is for you, is for the lost is so that they will come into their, their fullness. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that He is and all that He has. All that He is, all that He has. I want to tell you, I'm on my way to heaven. I don't care who thinks what about me. I'm going to sit in God's fullness, and I'm going to be right up there. And if you don't take your position, I'll take yours as well. I want to tell you, I'm going to be so, I, I'm, I'm hungry for the things of God. I'm hungry. Do you know what is your hunger, your expectation of your hungry? If you get past yourself and you start loving others, that tells me you're hungry. Because everyone, as long as you've got a, a persecution complex, and you're just looking at yourself and my problems, and Lord, why me, Lord? What have I ever done that was worth even one of these pleasures I've known? Okay, well, Chris Christopherson did a buy better job. Um, but what I believe, what I earnestly believe, is that God is busy doing something in us that we will understand how it is to have His eyes. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, my desire in this season is not for riches. I will give it all away. I don't desire anything. I desire your presence. I desire, Lord, to see the lost side. Lord, give me an opportunity to preach this gospel to someone that needs it. I love you guys so much. I really love this building. And I love because the Lord has met me so many times here. But it's not being here. It's to sit and come into His presence and really realize what He has done for me. I think back of the places we've been and where we've come from and those times I've 
I've rejected his love those times. I was such a bad image of him. I said, Lord, who am I that you take delight in me? Who are we? And he takes notice of us. Perfect, sinless, fearless. Who am I that you are mindful of me? What have I done, Lord, to deserve this? I want to tell you, I'm so blessed. I've, I've got the sweetest wife. I've got, I'm blessed with children. We are so, if I never have to get money again, I'm still wealthy. I'm so wealthy. Since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all that He is and all that He has. We will experience being co-glorified with Him, provided that we accept His suffering as our own. What was the suffering you went through? We think it's about going to the cross. Yes, take up your cross and follow me. The suffering you went through was when He saw people refusing and rejecting the Father. Amen. I want to tell you that I'm trusting the Lord and I say, Lord, come and grow in me a heart for your suffering. Let me pain where you pain. Let me love where you love. Lord, let me be where you want me to be. I'm yearning for these times that we will go where people will say, Pastor, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I'm going to sit at this friend's house and I'm going to pray to, for, to him, for him today. And that's why I say we need to be relevant because if we are only limited into a, a one hour, 15 minute space, we can't trust God really to come and move because he's so boxed in in our experience. What will we do? I mean, let's have eight hours church and go and sit at home for the next two weeks and just love our family. Let's get into His presence. Let's allow the Spirit to come and throw out all our philosophy, our schedules, our times. And I know we've got certain structures because we work. But you know what the Father takes delight in in this season? is those hearts that you're saying, Lord, we need more, we need more. I'm contemplating, I'm telling you, I want to start church on Friday, Friday evenings. People come from work, they come and lie in His presence. You're tired, the Bible says you get filled in His presence. Does next with your refresh, the accurate prepare, flicks, drugs, sex, rock and roll, nothing satisfy me as the presence is God. It's everything is for him, to him, and about him. There's nothing that's gonna soothe your soul as when you come close to his breast. One of his names means the multi-breasted one. Did you say I say come lee? Come soak the night. Kom drink tegen mij, kom zet jouw boos hier tegen mij. Van die beste intimiteit zoemelijk en een kind wordt gevormd wanneer dat kind in haar maas een boos leeg. En hij boos klem. Waar of niet waar? Know what God wants? He wants us back on the breast. Not on milk, but close to his heart. So close. I'm going to read it for you. Psalm 27 verse 4 to 8. Here's the one thing I cry from Yahweh. The one thing I seek above all else. I want to live with him every moment in his house. Beholding the marvelous beauty of Yahweh. Filled with an awe. Delighting in the glory and grace. I want to contemplate in his temple. In the day of trouble. He will treasure me in his shelter. Whenever I get into a mess. You know what? Come to my house. I will shelter you. I will close you up. I will, I will comfort you. Not necessarily approve of your sin, but I'll take it away from you. So that you'll not walk with the conviction of who you were. It does not mean that there's not a consequence. I want to tell you, some of the greatest sons of God are sitting in jail. That's why the, the Bible says, do not neglect those who are in prison. Because we do not go to the prison because we feel you need to serve out your sentence. Amen. Where what we need to do is to go and remind them and say, listen here, man, well done. You've done this, you've wronged, but you know what? You're paying your dues and God is raising you up. 
The Bible says, let every man be a liar. God speaks the truth. I want to tell you, we need to grow a heart for those who are broken, lost, and that's far. And now, if, you know, if we are not going to do it, God will raise up stones. He will raise up the hard ones from the street to go and do it. Weet you what's the indictment in the kerk? We've not not only loved Him. The Bible says, you your naaste lief is as yourself. With other words, you must Hom kan lief hee, soos wat jy glo hy jou lief hee. Dis net as ek in die vaders hart sien, lief hy my het, laat ek jou kan lief hee. A greater love is no one seen that one would lay down his life. Luister hier so. He will lift me up upon a rock, out of reach from all my enemies who surround me. Triumphant now, I'll bring him my offerings of praise, singing and shouting with ec- ecstatic joy. Yes, I will sing praises to Yahweh. Hear my cry. Show me mercy and send the help I need. I heard your voice in my heart say, Come seek my face. My inner being responded, Yahweh, I'm seeking your face with all my heart. What a psalm. Sê nog nooit dit toe gekryd nie, dit is wat jy moet kry. Hy sê nie in transaal, hy sê one thing I seek which I desire, is to come into your presence. Om in die teenwoordigheid te wees, Heere, dit is die ding, waarvoor ek kryf. Hy maak het soos een draak, hy sê, weet jy Heere, dit, ek kan nie sonder dit nie, dit is die ding, wat ek hier altijd naartoe terug gaan, is om by u te wees. En weet jy wat, hoekom? Hy praat eindelijk van een plek, wat hy vervalle en weg moes wees, maar omdat God om so lief het, kom hy nabij, en sy respons is, I am seeking your face with all my heart. Jy moet die Heere jou God lief met jou jylle hart, al jou siel, al jou verstand, al jou kracht. Hoe lyk dit? As is wanneer jy sien hoe papa na jou kyk. Hoe kyk hy na jou gesin? How much he has loved you in the door. En ek wil vir jou sê, ek het vir my seens gesê, nothing, nothing will ever separate you from me. Waar nie wat jy is, of hoe slecht jy, jy, jy gegaan het nie. I will love you, but I'm going to teach you how to love others as well. And how to look with God's grace, not only upon yourself, but on others. Ah, yes, I don't know if I can do this. Um, yo. Mag I have a few seconds? Is it a yes or a no? Okay, so what I can do. The book of songs of song. Ek voel ek wil net die ding neerlef van oogend, ek geloof die Heere gaan mense kom genees. Hy sê in die boek of song of songs, is dit die, is dit die kerk wat eerste respond ten oor, ten oor Jesus. En die interessante ding is dat ek gaan inlees in die, dit is ook die eerste boek wat Brian Simmons, wat die Passion Translation geskryf het, wat hy, get, wat hy getransluit het, is die boek of songs of songs. En sy, die vrou begin so, sy sê, Jerusalem maidens, in this twilight darkness, I know I am so unworthy. In die tijdperk waar ek nie duidelik die licht van God kan sien nie, ek weet hoe onwaardig is ek. So in need, yet you are so lovely, I feel as dark and dry as the desert tents of the wandering nomads. Yet you are so lovely, dit is die koning wat nou reageer. En die koning sê vir, jy is nie donker gebrand dier die son nie, jy is nie ver nie, jy is nie afvallig nie. Laas week saterdag sit ek op die trouw en ek sien hier die breidegom met die gold draai en sit daar rok so gaan, is hier die rook kom het so achteraan en ek sien sy presence om haar. Luister mooi, yet you are so lovely like the fine linen tapestry hanging in the holy place. Wanneer God oor jou praat, praat hy met jou asof jy klaar, you are seated in the holy place. He has seen you there, he has loved you for being there and that's where he has positioned you. En kyk mooi, hy sê, ek het jou daar gesit in die tapestrie, in die hoogheilige plek. En luister wat sê sy vir hom, die kerk sê, antwoord om, please don't stare in scorn because of my dark and sinful ways. My angry brothers quarreled with me and appointed me a guardian of their ministry vineyards. I want to tell you, we got a angry brothers ministry. I said to the Lord, Lord, help me because I refuse to put people under a condemnation. I refuse to take people back and remind them from where they come if the Father has called them from glory to glory. I refuse 
to come with the, with the law of Moses on people. And li- li- listen here how, how God responds to her. Um, yet I've not tended, uh, this is still, still the, um, the church, yet I've not tended my vineyard within. She's saying, I have not looked after my inner garden. Have you looked after your inner garden? Have you looked, the Bible said the heart, um, the heart is deceitful above all things. Amen. Die Bible sê, beskerm jou hart meer as alles wat, in, wat, wat beskerm moet word, want daar inleid die oorsprong van die lewe. Mens het vir jou kon vertel dat jou hart is vuil, jy is nie goed genoeg nie. En dis nie wat God doen nie, luister mooi. She said, I've not attended my garden within. And the moment when she said it, when she was honest and transparent, hear the father's heart towards her, listen my radiant one. Daar ek het nou vir jou vertel, Jesus became radiant, he became he bore the light of the Father and the Father was radiant over him. If you ever lose sight of me, just follow in my footsteps where I lead my lovers. Come with your burdens and cares. Come with all your swaryere, all your swakere. Come to the place near to the sanctuary of my shepherds. My dearest one, let me tell you how I see you. Let me tell you that you are not dark. Let me tell you that you are not sinful. Let me tell you you are delightful to me. Yes, can I go home and cry? Yo. You are so thrilling to me. What did Law say? Tan is a man for Tan is say, You are thrilling to him. Gestral. Yes. Yes. Eric, what did Law say? Yes, go. I weet not cry. He saw it's loot of it's errands. But it's what will be in my. You are thrilling to me, bro. You have to wear the blues. I'm more my song. You say you have to blues. It's never going to play for say. Wait, what? No, no. Can a smart is for comer. Doch, let the legan. It's free to men in the church. It's free to men over. I want to tell you, you are thrilling to him. This is sexy, Niri Owens. Blues is what you want. God is sold out on us. Nice and moe. He wants you to be thrilling. Thrilling. You are thrilling to me. To gaze upon you is like looking at one of Pharaoh's finest horses. A strong regal steed pulling his royal chariot. Your tender cheeks are beautiful. Your earrings and gem laden necklace set them ablaze. We will enhance your beauty. We will enhance your beauty with golden ornaments and studded and with silver. But the Lord says, I say, I'm going to so come door, and I'm going to so up here sit. And then, as I, you're going to not just wait when you know yourself, look where yourself the prank you can see. But I'm going to go up here and sit, and I'm going to so come laugh. You're going to, you're going to a door for the Lord. Owens, here was not just for his bride. Here is the bride that comes. Here is the church. I'm going to say the next thing. The church in the revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus, not knowing that we are servants, but that we are His beloved that we are his bride, that we are his sons, that we are his delight, we are his Hepzibah, is the next move of God which will not stop. Because love never gets centers around you. It always gets centers around someone else. True love is always when you give. I'm not a giver by nature. I've learned it from my wife. Is the way how she can give and give and give. And I felt the heart of the Father in her giving. I want to tell you there's something about to happen to the church that you've never seen or experienced or could have ever thought or imagined that's about to happen in your household. Get ready, sir. Get ready. Things are about to happen. Every part of you are so beautiful, my darling. Perfect is your beauty without flaw within. Um, this in Songs of Solomon is the following slide. Yellow, where? 4, 7 to 10. Yeah. Now you are ready, my bride, to come with me as we climb to the highest peaks together. Come now, my son, with my not die hoop plekke toe, hoe kom? Dis op die hoop plekke waar ek en jy so verlees van hom. Ek, ek het, wie, wie vind jy dit hoogte vrees? Toe ek in Dubai kom, toe klim ons die hoogste gebouw op, en hier sit ek en my vrou en Christopher en het klomp mens, en ons sit in die plek, en ons kyk af op die gebouw, en ek sit soos een kat, wat, ek is bang. Ek het nooit geweet, ek is bang vir hoogtes nie. Ek kyk aan uit die vliegtuig uit, dit, dit, dit plaam my nie. Hier is ek, en daar staan ek, en ek check hierdie, ek besef oor die, as iemand sy glas hier gaan breks, het jy waarschijnlijk my nou, wat ek weer gemees ben. So ek, heren, ek, ek wil net die aarde toekom nie. Heren, ek, ek wil nie een plaas koop in Dubai nie, asjeblief. 
en ek sit met hierdie, hierdie, hierdie groot vrees in my, weet jy wat, again what I can tell you, is perfect love, cause out all fear, every part of you are beautiful my darling, perfect is your beauty without flaw within, now you are ready, to come with me to the high places, come with me through the archway of trust, hierdie, hierdie deur wat dier ons gaan gaan, gaan wees jou vertrouwe, we will look down from the crest of the Dinstring Mounts and from the summit of our um, sublime sanctuary, from the lion's den and the leopard's lair, for you reach into my heart with one flash, this is the Koning wat praat, with one flash of your eyes, I am undone by your love. The eerste keer to jou oor na God toe, hy sê, I'm undone by your love. Het, 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 ek onthou hoe ek jelly bene gekryd met my vrou, het enig een van julle raai ervarings gehad, jy loop sy na voel het so asof jy, asof jy, jy is verlief, verlief verloore, ek het, ek het vergeet, waar is my sleetels, ek sê ou wat baie, my goed is op sekere plek is, ek sê my goed waar ek weet, sy het my die mekaar gehad vir een seizoen, wat ek nie geweet het of ek kom of gaan of wie ek is nie, luister mooi, with one flash of your eyes, I am undone by your love, my beloved, my equal, I roep jou, say equal, my bride, you leave me breathless, I am overcome by merely a glance from your worshipping eyes, for you have stolen my heart, you have stolen my heart, I'm held hostage by your love, and by the grace of your righteous shining upon me, how satisfying to me, my equal, my bride, your love is my finest wine, intoxicating and thrilling, and your sweet perfume praises, so exotic, so pleasing, kan jylle sy hart voel van oogend oor jou, ek gaan vir iemand vraag wie die nachtmaal moet uitdeel, begin vir my net so lang die nachtmaal uitdeel, Fasten me upon your heart. This is 8, 6 to 7. This is the last gedeelte. Fasten me upon your heart as a seal of fire forevermore. This living, consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. Can it work for you? He says, Sit me as a seal on your heart. And here is seal, here is fear. He says, Here is fear. 1 vers 13 sê dat jy word, jy word verseel met die beloofde heilige gees. This living consuming flame will seal you as my prisoner of love. My prisoner of love. How beautiful doesn't that sound? Met jou gevangene gevat dier my liefde. Ek hou jou nie vast met ketangs of met meer en ek hou jou vast met my liefde. As my liefde so swaar op jou druk dat jy nie kan beweeg nie, dat jy can't refuse me you've became a prisoner of love. Amen? How lovely, how lovely is your dwelling place. My passion is stronger than the chains of death. Romeine 8, 31. Wat sal jou skuif in die liefde van die Heere? Geen dood, geen engele, geen boos en machte. My passion is stronger than the chains of death and the grave, all consuming as the very flashes of fire from the burning heart of God place this fierce, unrelenting fire over your entire being. Rivers of pain and persecution will never extinguish this flame. I want to just read this again for a second. Just take note. Rivers of pain and persecution will never extinguish this flame. Heere, die geest het in my begin gin brand. Ek hoef jou sê, jou seer kan jou nie weghou van sy liefde af. Jou, jou echtscheiding kan jou nie weghou van sy liefde af nie. Daar is niks wat jou kan weghou van sy liefde af nie. Niks. Place this fears and rentling fire over your entire being. Endless floods will be unable to quench this rashing fire that burns within you. Everything will be consumed. It will stop at nothing as you yield everything to his furious fire until it won't even seem to you like a sacrifice anymore. Vrouw, hoor het die woord. Endless floods will be unable to quench this raging fire that burns within you. Hierdie vier, hierdie vier van liefde, gaan nie gequench word nie. Everything will be consumed. Ek wil volgend vir jou sê, jou siekte word volgend dier Jesus consumed. Jou siekte 
jouw ziektestoestand, jouw familie's ziektestoestand, wordt concealed door zijn liefde. Everything will be concealed. Jouw perversiteit van ochtend, als jij kan zien hoe lief hij jou heeft en hoe hij naar jou kijkt met zijn oor, niet met die oor waar nou jij he, wil hij moet naar jou kijken niet. Dan deel hij van ochtend met elke vorm van homoseksualiteit, elke vorm van seer, elke dwelmverslaving, elke insecurity, elke haat. Are you willing to come into his presence? Lees dit mooi. It will stop at nothing as you yield everything to this furious fire until it won't even seem to you like a sacrifice anymore. As you need come, if you just come, it feels like this sacrifice. Lord, I can't bring this to you. But once you come, it won't feel like a sacrifice anymore. Kom ons vat het ons nacht ons so en terwijl die rand met ons gaan kom bedien. This is my desire to honor you Lord with all my heart I worship you So the Lord says this morning that I love you so much that I will not have any excuse that comes to separate you from my love. This morning, I'm chasing after you for you are my beloved and I am yours. I hear the Lord says, I've seek you out and I found you thrilling. You are so beautiful and thrilling to me that I yearn for your presence. This morning as you eat this bread, I want you to realize that the price has been paid and his body was broken so that whenever you would come and say, Dad, here am I. Lord, heal me, touch me, use me, that he would come and he would do it. Vanochtend, soos wat jy die broekie eet, word dit vir jou die voorrecht om te sê, Dad, man, ek love you. Kom ons eet van ochtend die brood wat vir jou een belofte is vir geneesing. This is the promise that God gave and He said, I've given it all. So let the weak say they are poor. Change your confession. Let the poor say that they are rich. Let the, let the weak say that they are strong. Let the poor say they are rich. Let the sick say they are healed. Let the unloved say we are loved. 
that to the praise said we are joyous. Kom ons eet van ochend dit. Ek het gehoor hoe die Heere sê, hy deel met die, met die gees van selfmoord in die generatie. Because we are not loved. Kom ons van die beker, hier is die Nieuwe Testament, sê die woord van die Heere, Hy sê die Nieuwe Testament ek vir jou gegeen, hier is die bewys, toe ek my bloed betaal, as jy hierdie celebreit, en jy hierdie drink, en jy sien, hoe ek alles vir jou gee, dat niks jou sal kan sky nie, hierdie bloed, maak jou van ochend vry, en hy wat vry is, sal waarlik vry wees, van ochend drink jy hierdie testament, jy sê, jyre, ek vat het, this my deal, I am seated in heavenly places, nothing will be able to separate me, there is nothing that is going to stand in my way, because I found the one my heart yearns for. Kom ons drink in die testament. Terwijl die rand ons in worship gaan inlaai, gaan een gebed doen, allemaal wat siek is, wil ek vraag, kom vir my voor toe, maar die, ek wil iemand voor in toe kom, ek weet of ons gaan toestep, en ons gaan kyk wat die heren doen, <laughs> kom, kom vir in toe, dat is vir jou, bid, as die raai woord so kan vat, gaan ek wil seker vir jou toestep, uh, Pieter het nooit, oor die Tannese voet was nou nog seer, <laughs> kom ons gaan nou worship in, this is my Gosh. desire, to honor you and Lord with all my heart I worship you and all I have within me I give that 
that I take Every moment I'm away Lord, have your way in me Lord, I give you my heart I give you my soul Every moment I'm away Lord, have your way in me Lord, I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone Every breath that I take moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take. Moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me, Lord. I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I live for you alone, every breath that I take. I'm away, Lord, have your way in me, Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that I take. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I live for you alone, every breath that I take. Every moment I'm away, yes, Jesus. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. Ek hoor hoe die Heere hierdie liekie vir ons terug sing vir oogend. Ek hoor hoe sing hy, My son, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, every breath that you take, every moment you're away, I'll have my will in yours. Ek geloof van oogend, dat die Heere jou wil kom lief hee met die keer van sy liefde. En net terwijl ons verstaan, gaan ek weer jou sien afbid en enig iemand wat voor en toe wil kom vir gebed en bid jy so welkom. Maar luister wat sê, hy sê in John 13 vers 34, sê, A new commandment I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. 1 Korintheer 16.14 sê, Do everything in love. Everything. From here on, if you go out, everything. If you go and buy food this afternoon, go and do it in love. Weet jy, ek het een rikkie terug, het ek een stelling gemaakt in die kerk, en ek sê, ek gee nooit vir mense op straat, gee ek geld nie. Ek sit en ek hoor hoe die heren van my sê, hy sê vir my, alhoewel jou feite reg is, is dit nie die waarheid nie. Ek hoor net hoe die Heere vir my sê, hy mens en ek lief. Maar Matthijs, hulle gaan dwellingskoop, ek weet. Hulle gaan dit doen, ja. 
But next time they will come to you, and then you'll tell them about Jesus. And you'll bring them to us, and you'll, whatever it's going to take. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Just hear this confession. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. You know how loved you are? It's covered a multitude of sins. This is the message you heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Lastly, Anna, dear child, let us not love with words of the tongue, but with action and in truth. Sit my your hand up your heart for him. Here is a revival. revival. I glo jyre is besig om 'n ding in ons hart te los te maak. En ek wil vra vir Lord that you will take this head revelation that you will awaken it in our hearts. May something happen that the outcome will be of so many people that they will come and sit in your presence that they will yearn and desire you as never before. May the outcome be Lord that people will come and they cannot leave or go out of your presence, that they will sit, that they will sit in your worship, and in adoration, and Lord, I, I close the church's eyes, for all these things, that's happening around us, I ask you, the Bible says, we are unschuldig van evil, Lord, come and love us so much, that we will be able to keep our eyes on you, and you alone, let us yearn for you again, and Father, I ask that more than anything. Lord, your presence, your presence in this house, in Jesus' mighty name.